Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar and this is Two Point Hospital Strategy and Tactics Quick Tip. So today we are going to tackle the psych ward. Um, the psychiatry room is uh, unlocked fairly early. You, you need to uh, start dealing with psychiatric uh, illnesses, uh, I think, as early as the second or third level of the campaign. Uh, but it is something that you'll want in your hospital. Um, now, um, as far as our build for it, it is a minimum room size of 3x3, three three, and I recommend you keep it that way. No real reason to, to go uh, much bigger than it needs to be. Now, as far as um, the door layout for, for it, uh, we're going to utilize a little bit of tech from our uh, Milton GP's office, where we do not want it on the middle two squares. We want it offset to one side or the other. You're pretty free to do it uh, one side or the other uh, as far as you want, but as far as if you want to shave off the most frames of animation, you want it on the left side because that's the opposite, you know, the, based on how the door uh, opens and closes. Um, it'll be fewer frames of animation for the patient to get in. Right then, now, for our first thing here, we want the psychiatric couch. We need one of these for the room to do its thing, for the patient to lay down. Um, and in this case, what we actually want to do is we want to lay, we want to put it uh, perpendicular here, uh, right down the middle, um, like that. Uh, we can have it facing forward. I've, I've, the... I've done some testing between it facing forward and backwards. Um, it's it's inconclusive. It doesn't uh, the the animation frames seem to be about on par. Uh, but we also need the uh, psychiatrist's armchair. I like putting that immediately in front, but facing away, uh, just because it has a little bit bigger footprint in front of the chair, um, and we can maximize our space a little bit better this way. Now, this, uh, this room by itself is, is you know, I mean, I, I, we, could, we could finish the room at this point and we'd be all done. But there's a lot more we could do here. Uh, this room is one that especially uh, takes advantage of medicine cabinets and their effects because the, psychi the psychiatry room can both uh, treat and diagnose patients. So the bonus for treatment and diagnosis from these cabinets will be in full force regardless of what type of patient there is in there at the, at the moment. Um, the other thing about this room is that it is not a machine room. There is no machine in this room, uh, and therefore nothing to upgrade for a 25 and 50% bonus to effectiveness for both of the uh, things in this room. So you are relying entirely on the skill of your psychiatrist. Uh, so we want to give them a little bit of a boost. So these medicine cabinets are going to be exactly how you do that. Uh, what you want to do is uh, basically run, um, lay them, sort of ring around the rosy style. Uh, I'll do like four of, them, uh, four of them on here, like that, rotate, um, and then say one, two, three, four, and then one and two. Now. Uh, the magic number that we're aiming for here is 10. Having 10 of these is really what you want. I mean, there's, there is no harm in going for an 11th and maybe a 12th here. Uh, that is certainly doable. Uh, but you, at the very least, you want at least 10. There's a couple reasons why 10 is the magic number. So with, um, with, with a, uh, a, a psychiatrist, they get a 20% uh, bonus to their treatment power uh, for every level of psychiatry they are trained in. Um, in addition, for um, you get a 10% bonus to your treatment chances for every level you are, regardless of what you're trained in. Uh, ergo, a level 3 psychiatrist who's been trained in three levels of psychiatry will net you a treatment chance of 90%. This, uh, all of these, having at least 10 of these, will push that over the edge and give them a 100%, or rather 99% with the hard cap, uh, treatment chance uh, for any patients uh, that wander in there so that you'll have uh, perfect success regardless of the difficulty of the uh, illness in there. And it certainly helps with the uh, diagnosis power. Uh, the psych room is not super powerful when it comes to diagnosing, but there are some illnesses that are well diagnosed in there and therefore you'll get some good percentages off of that. 
Uh, now, to flesh this room out, no reason why it uh, it can't be a nice one. I do like, uh, since we have option uh, uh, the ability to get the rugs, I do like to place a couple of rugs in here, just, just to bring up the room's prestige. And, of course, we cannot forget the our friends, the Gold Star Awards. Uh, I'm just going to sneak them in here around, uh, around here like that. Uh, you don't necessarily have to push this room to a five star, uh, but eh, we might as well. Um, also, if you uh, have a temperature fixer that is needed, we are on Blighton right now, so we do need temperature fixers. Um, if it's a hot one, obviously grab yourself a radiator. If it's a cold one, grab an ice sculpture uh, or air conditioner if you don't have that DLC. Uh, and place it on the side of the chairs opposite to the door. You don't want this thing getting in the way of the patient's path. So place it on this side over here if you want. One should be enough to cover the whole room because it's a fairly small room. All right, uh, looking good to me. Um, and of course, just as a reminder for your psychiatric um, um, doctors, you uh, definitely want them pure, as pure as possible and trained in nothing but psychiatry. So every level, psych 1, psych 2, psych 3, psych 4, psych 5, even though with this setup you cap out on treatment effectiveness as once they reach level 3, the extra levels and the extra training in psych will help make their diagnostic prowess even more potent. Um, so it's certainly not a waste. Thing. I almost forgot. Um, one, one last little uh, bit uh, to the psych room. So unlike um, the psych room is sort of your training to um, uh, sort of get you used to the idea of the surgical center. It's it is the animations on this are longer. Uh, if you compare it to, say, the pharmacy or a GP's office visit or, you know, one of the clinics, the animations and the time it takes to process uh, patients within the uh, psychiatry room is just flat out longer. And there's nothing you can do to speed that up. Uh, your doctor's got to talk with them. They're going to react. They got to, you know, unleash their inner demons, so to speak. Um, so it just takes a while to churn through people. So more so than other rooms of its you know, level and caliber, you're probably going to need duplicates of the psychiatry room sooner rather than later. So it's useful to keep a, uh, uh, you know, an extra psych uh, uh, doctor trained up um, and have two rooms operating at once um, at the beginning and then going up for, as, as demand dictates. Um, it helps just keeps the patients flowing and will help uh, take some of the, uh, the diagnostic burden off of your other rooms um, as uh, some diagnosis patients go in here. By the way, uh, they can since they can diagnose and treat, I do recommend keeping the, both of these on uh, for all of your psych rooms. There's no, I've done some testing, there's no real tactical and strategic reason to have a diagnosis only or treatment only psychiatry room unless they're unless you've got your your whole hospital like super strictly cordoned off where you have a diagnostic wing and a treatment wing and you want to keep them um keep their functions specific there so that those are my tips on the psych room psych doctors and their use in your hospital so uh as before, if you like this episode, uh, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe button, ba 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 ba. You already said that bit. Um, so uh, thank you for joining me, and um, stay tuned for more Two Point Hospital quick tips. Pinstar out. See ya.